All right. Hi, I am uh, Jeremy Zorak. I am a uh, freshman at Rutgers. I'm studying urban planning. Of course, very relevant to the day's uh, activities. Um, and my, uh, my presentation is on sort of the basics, like, you know, just intro level stuff about if you want to, you know, get into transit photography. Um, I'm sure a lot of you follow me already on Twitter. Um, if you don't, uh, it's right there at Jeremy Zorek. Uh, I post a lot of my stuff there as well as talk about transit and development and all sorts of urban goodies. So let's get right into it. So first of all, a very important thing is it's not about the equipment. It doesn't matter if you have, you know, a point and shoot. I first started taking photos, a little Canon point and shoot camera. These two photos that you see in the presentation right here were taken with my phone, one a few years ago. Uh, and this one a few weeks ago, both of which are very competent photos, um, both just taken with a smartphone. So, you know, it doesn't really matter if you have, you know, a big professional camera that costs $2,000 with an amazing lens, or if you just have your phone, because either one can probably get you a good shot. So one of the first things you want to keep in mind is that there's like sort of two differences between the quote unquote standard sort of photo which is like what we have on the left here. So this one on the left, you know, it's a fine photo. It's well lit. You know, you can see the train and everything. Uh, the framing, you know, it's nice and centered. But it's not that interesting because it's just sort of that front angle, that sort of right from the side shooting the train. Now over on the right, we have something that is a little more interesting. You know, we're above the trains. We have the sunlight coming down with the sunset from the background. We have two trains. We have them lined up with City Field right in the back. So you have this nice sight line and you also have this more interesting vantage point from above. So, you know, you're, you're able to, to change it up a little and make it more interesting. And so like often, so like when I was first shooting, I would often have shots just like on the left, things that were, you know, very basic, your standard, it's called a wedge, a three quarters wedge shot is what it's known as. So oftentimes, you know, I just be shooting like that, but more, but as I, you know, got better and got more used to the camera and such, I, you know, started to go for the more interesting stuff and it often, you know, comes out with a better, more interesting, more engaging shot like you see on the right. That one I took a few weeks ago right before I left for college from the deck of a parking garage in Flushing. We see the seven train coming into Flushing at sunset. Um, so be mindful of lighting, something you often have to take in, into consideration when uh, looking at transit stuff is just, you know, what's the light going to look like? Because if you're on the wrong side of the tracks or whatever, you may have a really badly backlit photo. And even if it might be well composed, the lighting can really screw up a nice shot. Like, so like on the left here, I was in Pennsylvania over the summer at a nice overlook on the uh, Norfolk Southerns line between uh, Pittsburgh and Harrisburg. And we have this nice shot with the light coming down through the trees just after a rainstorm, you know, lighting up the shot. You have some rain coming off of the trees you know, it's a really interesting shot. You have two trains there, nice and centered. But on the right here, uh, about a month ago or so in December, right after the snowstorm in New York, um, I went down to the Brighton line to try to get some shots of the trains in the snow. And the sun came out right before I wanted this shot of the Q train at the Diamond Q and completely backlit the photo. So what you have there is, you know, the front of the train completely backlit. The side of it's fine, but really that sun just came out five minutes before I took the shot and just messed things up. Now, had it been facing the other way, it would have been an amazing shot with some nice, good lighting. So that's just one of the things to be mindful of is, you know, you might not always have the opportunity. Like here, I was sort of, you know, out of luck. It just so happened the sun came out behind some clouds right before I wanted the shot. But if you can, you know, try to adjust your, your angle or whatever to, to adapt to the lighting. So because that will like make a breaker shot like this, you know, it's overexposed in some places, it's backlit in others, not a great shot. But this one, you know, it's more interesting with the, the light coming down onto the train. So next, one of the things I've been more recently trying is because, you know, winter time, uh, a lot more darkness is don't uh, be afraid of the dark. Phones nowadays often have pretty good dark modes. Like this, this one right at the beginning that was taken with my iPhone 11 using like that night mode where, you know, has a few seconds of exposure and you get a pretty good shot. So don't be afraid to, you know, sort of mess around. If you have a camera, don't be afraid to, you know, put it in a manual, see what you can program the settings, stuff like that. Even some apps for phones that you downloaded something else other than the stock camera app, 
that will often, you know, have let you fill the settings a little bit, maybe not as much as, you know, an actual like point and shoot or DSLR or mirrorless, but you will be able to, you know, play around with it and see what you can get. Cause nighttime, you can get some interesting shots even without something like an external flash. So like on the left here, this was back in October at Mountain Station in New Jersey. I, you know, adjusted the settings for the lighting. It was getting dark. And I was able to get this really nice pan shot of this train coming in for a stop at the station. You know, everything around it is sort of blurry, but you know, the cab at the front of the train is right in focus. And the, the orange lighting of the station also sort of gives that photo an interesting look. You know, it's not just, it's not just nighttime or it's not just some sunlight shot you have this nice orange light on the side of the train as well. And on the right here, it might not be the best shot, but I did get a nice shot that I wanted of one of New Jersey Transit's F40s coming through our Rutherford station at night. And I was really, that night, I was really playing around with the settings of my camera, trying to get that nice uh, nighttime shot. And, you know, you, you, with a little bit of fiddling around, so, you know, sometimes you can get a pretty decent shot like that. It's, it's tough. And also one of the most important things about photography is, for anyone, and this probably goes from, you know, the best photographers to someone just picking up a camera or a phone is, you know, practice makes perfect. And in this case, it's not even perfect, but practice will help you. Um, you know, just as you learn your camera, as you learn what you have, as you learn, you know, what settings you want for different speeds, for different lighting, for different looks, you will learn, you know, you're learning your way around the camera and learn your way around how to get a nice shot. Most importantly, I think, uh, is just enjoy yourself. Uh, like, don't be afraid to, you know, just take those standard shots looking from the side, you know, because it's still a nice photo. You know, it's not the most compositionally interesting or if the lighting isn't the best, like, go back here to the shot of the Q train, you know, it might not be the best shot, but it was a nice shot with the diamond Q on the front, which is what I sort of wanted. Um, even if it's not the most interesting, like the one on the left, um, it still is a nice photo. I was able to catch an SD70 Mac up in uh, Amsterdam, New York in the fall. And I was really happy because it was a train that, you know, I don't normally get to see that often. So I was still happy with the shot because it was pretty well lit. Um, it was a pretty good angle. And even if you have something more interesting like this on the right, uh, New Jersey Transit Central Railroad of New Jersey Heritage Unit, pushing a set of uh, Comet coaches over the Moden Viaduct uh, in New York. Um, that's, you know, a much, a much more interesting shot, but either one of these, you know, I consider to be a perfectly, you know, good photo and each one has their merits. This one's a little more close. You have a front angle. This one's, you know, a little more, you have a zoomed out, you show the bridge, you have the whole train. Uh, but yeah, so most importantly, I think it's just the fact that at the end of the day, it's like a hobby. Um, that's what I do it for. I do it mainly for, for my own enjoyment, you know, to share online, to share in groups on Facebook, stuff like that, post on Instagram. So I won't beat myself up if I get, you know, not the best shot. Um, and also I think it's, it's important to, you know, just have fun. Um, if you're not enjoying it, I think that you're, there's, you're, you know, what's the fun in that? Uh, 